happening to you again? Why do you think that this is repeatedly happening to you? Why do you think they chose you? How far down the rabbit hole do you want to go? Here? As deep as we can okay, go. Okay. Okay. So, um, in order to tell that, I got to tell another story ahead of time. The story of March tenth, two thousand and thirteen, which is on, it's easy to find online on the presentations. I talk about it. It's an event that happened in the desert of of uh, southern Utah. <clears throat> this ta- this to tell this correctly takes about takes some time. So I'll I can. I don't want to give you just the surface story, but I'll, I'm going to try to race through it a little bit. Okay. Well, we have we have uh, five and a half hours how your plane leaves. Okay. <laughs> so I was at a UFO conference, and I um, was driving home. The UFO conference was in southern Arizona. I lived in Idaho. You draw a line. The travel line of travel is right through Utah. And I love Utah, so I wanted to take these little back roads and twisty, turny roads through like the through the Four Corners area, through like the national parks, through the the, the sandstone desert, you know, where like they shot the like the location for the Roadrunner cartoons, you know, right. that terrain, which I love. And I did a lot of outdoor work over the years, and I've spent a lot of time in that area, and I love it. So this is like it's deep bond yeah. to that area. Yeah, you spent a lot of your life outdoors, camping and hiking and teaching mountaineering in Alaska and and. Wyoming and all throughout the Rockies and in Canada and yeah and skiing in the winter so so this is this is like this is just my no, another day this for is, you this yeah. is what you're used to this yeah. is your sport so and then what happens is I'm totally comfortable sleeping outside sleeping under the stars. which is another crazy thing that's that's it's crazy sleeping in a bed that's crazy when you think about it you know like sleeping I'm, outside with no tent with fucking bears and rattlesnakes and rattlesnakes are asleep at night <laughs> rattlesnakes don't come at night and the bears are like yeah, you know, I've slept, so I've slept out in Yellowstone. Anyway, so yes, yeah, so I've it's so for me it's the, what's what's a tent going to do if the bear comes along? Like how's that going to slow him down? That's you true. Know, so, That's true. You know, so, might slow a rattlesnake down, but um, but uh, so at this point in my life, 2010, I've got the blog. I'm I'm going to UFO conferences. I'm completely immersed in this stuff. I've got a podcast. Um, and. Driving home from the UFO conference, there was a spot I knew. I'd driven these roads before, and I was like, you know, leave here in the morning. I bet you I sleep at this spot on Highway 20. I bet you I sleep there. I drove over there years ago, and I said, this would be a good place to sleep. So I'm like, I'm going to aim for that. That's where I want to sleep tonight. So I, I, uh, sun's going down. It's March, which is kind of wintry still. So it's cold at night in the desert that time of year, cold at night. So I pull into this little turnout, <coughs> and I... Um, lay my sleeping bag down in the dust. I got a great big winter sleeping bag. I got my pillow that I drive with. I've got a pad, a big thick pad. I'm right next to my car. The turnout was great. Like there's a spot I could, there's a little sort of dirt road. And there were some places where other people had obviously parked there. And there were some old campfire rings and stuff. People had been there. So it's a, it's a, it's not just like a random spot. There's obviously a place that other people can go. And, yeah. And, and, and it's like a little, it's a dirt going. road and stuff okay. like that. It accesses another dirt road and stuff like that. So it's a spot that, and this to, out west, it's pretty normal. Okay. You get tired. Right. Just pull off to the side of the road and sleep on the ground. You don't yeah. do that in Florida. It's way too fucking hot and humid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is like, this is, there's no humidity. Zero humidity. Right. And everyone's Mormon. So everyone's like, if like, that's like, uh, everyone's nice. So, mm. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm sleeping on, so I lay down to go to sleep and then I wake up and I look up on this hillside and I say, that looks just like a landed flying saucer. There's this thing up on this hillside. It's this big round structure. And I look up and I go, that looks just like a landed flying saucer. I think to myself, and um, I've got, do you want? Yeah, let's pull it inter, up. Inter pictures. You know what? Here, let me do one thing here. Like, can we edit this out or you can, we can put this no, in? No, let's put it in. So, so um, go to my website. The search blog, bar. And then just scroll down a little bit. Oops. <clears throat> And just keep on scrolling because I, I actually have a bunch of pictures that are all on one. Just keep no no um I won't okay let's try um I I don't know that I don't wouldn't know the title of it. Just scroll down. It's been within the last year or so. Just keep go fast. Just go buzz past everything. Oh no, wait, you're on the old page there. So just hit the top the the go all the way back up to the top and hit the logo at the top. And go to the home page. Reboot it. Yeah, reboot the home page. Great. Yeah, you can just go go go. Yeah, it's going to be just really, you might even have to go to the next page, but this is going to be easier for me to find it. 
Yeah, keep on going. Just go all the way down. I'll, I'll see it when it shows up. Keep on going down. Yeah, great. Yeah, go to older posts. Older posts down. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And then there's an owl I saw in the backyard. For those uh, listening and not watching, we are scrolling through uh, Mike, Oh, hold it. There Mike's we go. There we go. Great. Great. Okay, website. good. Oh, You're good there. So now the, all these pictures are, are from the March 10th story. So I've talked mm-hmm. about it on a, on a, in an audio book. Okay. And so, so go ahead. So there's the turnoff. Okay. okay, so that's where you were camping. That's where I was camping. That's okay. a that's a Google Maps view. I kind of I, I'm an illustrator, so I tooled that a little bit. And that you made arrow, it nighttime. I made it. I was a daytime picture. I made it nighttime. Yeah. So so go ahead. So click double click that image there with the thing. So I look up on this hillside, and there's this round building up there, and I say that looks just like a landed flying saucer, and I look at this thing, and I'm like thinking like, like I'm like, just was at a UFO conference, and I like like if this was a UFO. This is a landed flying saucer. I should feel something. And at my gut level, I should feel something. Like intuitively, I should feel something. Right. And I looked at this thing. I felt nothing at all. And I rolled over and went to sleep. I woke up a second time. And there was a coyote howling near my head. Now, I've slept outside a thousand nights in terrain like this. And I've heard a lot of coyotes. I have never heard anything that close. I sat up. I looked around. I couldn't see it. Surrounded do, by sage. Do coyotes birds. ever fuck with you? No, no they, they might. No, I've never heard anyone. Do coyotes don't mess with people. They're scared of them. Uh, not, okay. I mean, this, anything's possible, right? So yeah, I mean, they could get into food or something like that. Right, right. right. So, but uh, so anyway, but I was not scared at all. It was like this magic moment. Mm-hmm. Like I'm in this beautiful spot. There's a trillion stars. That's absolutely pres- like night in the desert is unlike anything else. It was way out in the middle of southern Utah. No light pollution from anywhere. So, like this coyote's howling, I look up and that thing is still there. And there was actually one little light off to the side, which I, you can see there's one light that's not really connected. And I remember thinking like, you know what that's like? That's like at my house at home. Like that's the lawn light, you know? Mm. Like I'm in front of this house. So I rolled over and went back to sleep. And I woke up a third time and there's a bush near my feet. And there was this bright light behind the bush. And it was like this weird light. It wasn't a car headlight. It wasn't someone with a flashlight. It was this weird light. It seemed white, but it it wasn't like a like a car, like you open a car door and the dome light. It wasn't it wasn't headlights. It was like something. My I was like, okay, someone else is sleeping here tonight. Mm. Someone just pulled in and they're sleeping here. And I looked up at that thing and it was still up there on the hilltop. And I rolled over and went back to bed. Now the next morning I woke up and I I don't remember if I looked up to see this building on the hillside. It was dark when I got up. Still, I like felt like I slept all night. I you know, kind of go to bed early when you're driving, and then I drove home. It was about a 12-hour drive or so from that from there, so 10 hours or so. So from that spot, early in the morning, like 5 in the morning, I start driving. I get home in the afternoon to my house in Idaho. And the first thing I do when I get home is I look up on Google Maps, thinking like, oh, there should be a, there should be a, a building there. A building there. So go ahead and scroll down a little bit. So there should be a building there. And I, I went back a year later. Yeah, okay, there's there's like, that's Google Maps. And I kind of put the little, uh, there's my sleeping spot with the yellow push pin. And there's the spot I went back later. So a year later, I went back there. There's no building up there. And that was two, okay, now I don't go too much farther. Yeah, so so that building there, or excuse me, that um that hillside there is the hillside without anything there. I went there full okay, daylight. That was your that was your perspective from where you were Absolute, sleeping, looking I was at standing the standing in the exact Make that picture big, spot. Jordan. Yeah, yeah right yeah. there. So it looks like, looks like, you know, sagebrush wilderness of, you know, cattle country in southern Utah. That's the whole, lots mm-hmm. of it looks like that. And that is exactly, I'm very, very skilled with maps. So that's exactly, yeah, yeah, as, a, as an outdoor educator. Yeah, okay. oh yeah, so I'm good. And I make maps. And so go up one. You have to, and then, yeah, so there's, that's Google Maps. So that was, so I, I used Photoshop and I put that arrow in and I put the little fake dots up there to show where the okay. round structure was. That is from the sleeping spot. It's 2.6, I think it's 2.6 miles away, which okay. in the desert is, you're, you're crystal clear. Right. Like there's no humidity in the air. So, <clears> so <throat> I've, I know I've, I've gone to my, like I've looked at homes 2.6 miles away like, uh, on a hillsides and I've measured on maps and, st- and you can see a house. You can totally see the roof and see the house and the garage and everything like that. Right. So, um, but it wasn't there, which I sort of knew. I, that was, but in the moment when I looked up on the map, I was like, why wasn't that there? Maybe the map was, maybe the new building's brand new and the map is only right. a year old, right? Mm-hmm. So 
I made a blog post and that's what I did the illustration for, for a blog post. So I posted that blog post. This is where it gets weird. Now that blog post, I posted at 1234, one, two, three, four. Okay. It's a little kernel mm -hmm. of information. If you go back in my blog and shortly after March 10th, there's the blog that where I write about it real time, slept out in the desert, saw this weird thing, heard coyotes, light at the foot of my bed. And then, uh, after I post it, I actually called MUFON. Said, have you had any reports from this area? Mm -hmm. this, the guy said, not from that last night. Would have been the night before, right? Not from last night, but we get a lot of reports in that area, yeah. So so go what, down one, and there's a little map there. So I'm standing, just click that once. So I'm standing at the side of my desk after posting this thing. And now just, you got to trust me on this one, because there's no one, just me. Like, you got to... I. I, standing at the side of my desk, I had this like one second click, psychic flash. Whoosh, whoosh. I see in my mind's eye this map. I see that in my mind's eye. And then it just is there for a second and it disappears. And I've got my computer open. I was just looking at maps. I got all these points. I got the point, the yellow mm -hmm. point there is where, or the greenish point there is where I was um, sleeping. Sleeping. And that's, that's. Uh, What's the red dot? That's, you'll find out <laughs> to tell the story correctly. Uh, so. I knew there were three events on this, three dots on this thing. So I knew what the, the green one was. That was the event from the night before. Right. And I knew what the blue one was. That was an event from doing this from my head. That was from the springtime of 2010. And I was camping with a friend of mine, Natasha, who I met at a UFO conference. She's from Germany. She came over to, we had a plan to spend time in the desert and hike around the Four Corners area. That's the Four Corners area. That's where Colorado, Utah, right. New Mexico, and Arizona all mm -hmm. come together. That's that little spot where the state lines cross there. So we had a great trip. We spent, we were hiking, for, we just went for weeks. We were hiking around. We had, it was great weather. It was magical. It was this great trip. And we were pulled into the little town of Cortez, Colorado. And there's something wrong with the brakes in my car. And so we're, so I like ask someone on the main street, like, is there a mechanic? And this guy says, oh, this guy back here, he's good. He's the town mechanic. Everyone goes to him. So I go to the mechanic, little teeny town, and I drop the car off. And then Natasha and I just sit out front for 45 minutes or something. And he comes out and it's, it's like, so he's got his oily rag. It's like small town in dusty Colorado. And he kind of looks at me and says, I can't let you leave town or you'll die. Mm. And I'm like, what do you, what is, what do you mean by that? And he says, well, the brakes are going to fail. The brakes are like the brakes is if I, I would be liable if I let you out of the, with the car like this. And it's like, right. okay, what does this mean? So well, I can fix it, but it's going to be about five days till the part comes in. It's like five days. Okay. So the guy at the shop helps me get a rent a car. Natasha and I have nothing to do. Like, well, like let's hang out for five days. So we'll leave the car here. We'll drive around a rent a car. The rent a car was great. It was easy. It was cheap. Mm -hmm. Little town, you know? So, so. That night, we camp on the side of the road. We ask someone, where's good camping on the side of the road around here? This girl at the coffee shop. She says, oh, this is a great spot. You go take this thing out of town. You turn left here, and there's a Forest Service road. You'll find great stuff out there. Great. So we went out there. We found great stuff. Set up a tent. And so Natasha and I are sitting side by side. And we woke up in the middle of the night screaming. Both of us were screaming. I have, she describes it the same way I do. I would, I, I've since called it synthetic fear. Like it was, I have spent thousands of nights in a tent. I, I, I've never felt anything like this. It was irrational fear. Here, go ahead and scroll up a little bit. So, so I'm, I'm, I, 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 oh no, down, excuse me, down. And just, uh, oops. Oh, I missed it. It's not in there. Sorry, I, it's going to be out of order here. I'll, I'll find it in a little bit. So, so I, um, uh, so I like Natasha. What happened? What happened? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? And I'm like freaking out. And she's like, I saw a face. Like, what, like saw a face. I don't know what that means. Saw a face. So, so we're screaming. And like, and I literally, I felt like I climbed on top of her. Like someone threw a hand grenade in the tent. Like, what's going on? Why are we both so scared? You can talk to Natasha. She'll, she's says it the same way. It was irrational. 
And then we just, so after a little bit, we're both asleep. We go from complete adrenaline freak out to asleep. And then, now this is where it gets very murky. And I'm only going to, this is, I'm going to tell you what I remember. I don't think this is what happened, but this is my memory. Mm-hmm. I had the total, I'm shaking just telling the story. I had this elevator up feeling. And I floated off the sleeping pad and I felt myself floating up and through the roof of the tent. And I just kind of faded away, just kind of faded into this whiteness, this realm of total whiteness. And as I was floating, I said, I have to remember this. I have to remember this. I have to remember this. And then it changed to, am I on a table? Am I on a table? Am I on a table? Now I have no memories of being on a table. Mm. I, all I have is a memory of just this totality of whiteness. So, I don't know. It's this, this, all of a sudden I hear Natasha's voice, which I don't think she said this. I hear Natasha's voice with her German accent. She says, Mike, you're floating. And then whoosh, I'm back in the tent. And I'm, and she, so we both sleep soundly. We wake up in the morning. The birds are chirping. The sun's out. And I'm like, Natasha, what happened last night? And she's, she's like, I saw this face. I don't know. And so when I was floating, I also saw a round floating pizza pan shaped disc, which I've called a mandala in, in the tent with me. Inside the tent? It was inside the tent. So she, I said, where, you know, she said, I saw this face and this is to tell the story properly. It requires a lot. I'm just going to, that's in the book. I'll, I'll the, yeah. I, would, I would sidetrack us and right, take right. a half hour to tell this part <laughs> and then come back again. So, so I get out of the tent, I walk around, and I'm like, I'm like, like, I'm literally looking for a spot on the ground where a flying saucer landed. There's nothing. There's no burn mark. I wanted to find it. Right. But later that day, I found a scratch on my chest. It started at my left shoulder and went almost to my belly button. And it was in, like, it was a legit scratch, like a, like a cat claw, single cat claw. <laughs> Red mark, red line. Hmm. But when you looked at it really closely, it wasn't a scratch at all. It wasn't like a, a wound like that at all. It was a, it was a line of tiny little fluid-filled blisters that were kind of red. And it, th- what happened is a few days later, it washed off. Like it, small dots almost? Like, in sequence? like a small line of polka dots. Okay. But each individual polka dot was a tiny fluid-filled blister, like, like half a millimeter, tiny. And I needed glasses to see it, and and when and I took a shower a few days later, and it washed off. And and both Natasha, Natasha's a UFO researcher in Germany. I'm a UFO researcher here. When it washed off, we both went, ah, "We should have taken a picture of it." That's another thing that's very common. People like avoiding pulling a camera out. Did you program. go and get a CAT scan after this? <laughs> no, I didn't. I never got a CAT scan. So. 